What is up, survivors? We're back for another mod review. This one comes from one of our community members. Somebody posted this on one of the other mod reviews, and that was Plant World. Now, on the on the first glance, I was like, I'm not too sure about this, but once I started playing around with it, I've actually started to really, really enjoy it a bit more. Let's get right into it. So essentially, what this is going to do is add a bunch of different crop plots, plants. It's, it's exponentially increasing how the farming and what you can farm and how it all works in current arc. You're going to be able to craft a few things that on your person to in turn make it be able to craft a bunch of other stuff so first and foremost you'll have these worm boxes these worm boxes are really what they're made to do is to craft fertilizer on there's different types of fertilizer you can make and we'll go through about how to make some of those things but basically it's a separate type of fertilizers you can use you can still use normal fertilizer with like dung beetle style stuff to just make fertilizer that way and you can use that i have tested it but you can also do it this way too we have a simple grill the grill is going to allow you to be able to cook certain things and also kind of like get different uh, uh stuff from different things essentially is what we're looking at so you'll be able to get like kelp and you'll be able to turn that into fiber you'll be able to make some of this consumable stuff you'll be able to get oil from some of the oily fruit but we'll talk about how you get all that stuff and then there's a couple of meat uh, options as well for you to cook and that provides different benefits for not only you but some of your teams as well so definitely pay attention to that what we have here is the wooden crop plot bench and the tech crop plot stations essentially these work the same way um, they obviously look a little bit different and from my understanding this is where you would get like the tech stuff the more of the tech um crop plots and such from yeah here we go so they're all so all your crop plots are sitting in here as well so you'll have the different pipe different um irrigation pipes under the bamboo section you'll have to do different uh foundations and some railings as well there's a lot of different stuff but really this is these are the majority of what you're crafting is going to come out of one of these two stations this one's going to be your simple grill is going to be making all your good food stuff and then these worm boxes are going to be able to provide you fertilizer. So what we're looking at is a bunch of different types of crop plots, and we'll kind of go over them briefly. Let's go over these guys first. These guys are just normal, uh, like loose soil crop plots is what they call them, and they snap together without a border on them, which I kind of like because it looks makes it look like one big crop plot. Um, you have the square shaped ones, and then the and then the triangle shaped ones as well that snap to each other. The difference between here is this is actually like a bamboo railing that you can put around. Like these are bamboo fence foundations that clip to the sides, and then you can put the railings around them if you want to, making it kind of cool. Up above, we have the different uh, uh, irrigation pipes running. This is a bamboo irrigation pipe. Pretty much works the same way, just looks different, right? Does the same thing. So what we have here is these current plants I have going which are these shrubbery plants which looks like it might have been an ode to monty python but that's beside the point but it looks like we can harvest these things much like we would be able to harvest things from uh the r plants from genesis 2 so it looks like yep so we get fiber from these guys is what it looks like this that's what i gather out of this fiber yeah fiber yep looks like fiber got it also, they generate these bugs, and they generate bugs. And you can see some earthworms in here. You can see the locusts in here. I think you'll actually see, like, maggots in here, I think, at some point. Uh, grasshoppers. The grasshoppers and locusts, because they'll be separate ones. But then there should be... Yeah, there's maggots in there as well. All of these bugs will just routinely pop up, but they actually do different things. Um, so, like, for instance, this one says most wild carnivores love this meat and eat it as an alternative to raw mutton. So maggots are actually really good for something like that. Um, the locust can be used as an equivalent to raw meat, and the grasshopper can be used in uh, raw prime, uh, raw fish meat, essentially, is what we're looking at here. And then the earthworms, really, they're made for, they can do like a little bit of hunger, but really, these guys are made for making fertilizer. So you definitely need these plants in order to make that stuff, and we'll talk about how to get a lot of those different plants, but the, you harvest these very much like how you would harvest the R plants off of Genesis 2. You'll see their health just build back up over time. You'll be able to harvest them again. That's pretty much how it works. These are tree crop plots. You'll be able to plant tree crop plots in here. Now you'll have normal crop plots like these guys. Then you'll also have the tech crop plots as well. It doesn't look like they do very, they act very much different. It's really just a matter of how you want it to look. It seems that the tech ones grow a little bit faster, but that's really all I got right now. These are all middlings right now, it looks like. But as you can see, we're growing trees. We have a, this is a dragon tree. We have the large light flower tree off of Genesis. Um, we have the this fir tree that's supposed to grow up and as well as the sulfur fungus spore. Now the fir tree, you should be able to get fir cones from, like pine cones, and those cones can be used as a direct alternative for thatch. Fiber and thatch are kind of the name of the game with this guy and we'll go through about how and why that works. So let's go check out our other stuff. 
So down here, um, in the water, you'll be able to craft these ocean sieves, which are essentially, you plug them in the ocean, and eventually over time, I already pulled them out, so I don't think there's another one in here. Ah, here we go. Eventually, they'll have this net of washed up goods. You'll be able to pull the net out and open it up, and it'll give you a bunch of different types of resources, sometimes seeds and resources that you'll use to plant seeds under underwater. And yes, there are seeds underwater too. So let's go down here, and as you can see, I have a bunch of these growing. I have them in two different sections. These section over here, uh, I believe are ocean crop plots. Yeah, they're just ocean crop plots and they're planted underwater, but they require a CO, some of these require CO2 to be able to work correctly. And what you'll have to do is make these CO2 irrigation pipes, which pretty much function just like normal ones. So this is essentially your intake right here. This is an intersecting pipe and this is like an emitter right here. It's like kind of a, like, a, like a tap essentially. But basically that's how it works. But as you can see, I'm growing flint coral, stone coral, and which one, this is wood coral, yep, yep, yep. And this is, I believe this is a uh, clamshell. Yeah, so I wonder if I can harvest any of this stuff. Let's see, let's see, let's see what they give me. One harvested shell, harvested shell, okay. I'm assuming this is gonna give me wood, right? Yep, gives you wood. This should give me stone, as it does. This should give me flint, as it does. So, you can actually have your underwater stuff and your crops growing underneath there. These are standard uh, square ocean soils, and they can actually still have the, uh, the the wall, the foundation thing snapped to the outside of them. But I just planted some of the berry bushes underneath here just because I wanted to see how they worked. Um, and it looks like we have some coral ferns. Cool. All right, so we got some stuff out of this, but basically you can grow stuff underwater too. This stuff is really cool because I really like the idea of making an underwater base, but you don't necessarily have a lot of resources nearby. Being able to plant these guys nearby would mean that you definitely do. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, folks. There's a ton of different plants that do all sorts of different stuff in here. This is just the stuff that I've been playing around with so far. All right, so orange coral fir fern, orange can be consumed, has an invigorating effect and gives you a good insulation for a short time. Dehydrates you when the expiration Oh, when it expires, it turns into fiber. Okay, fair enough. Open the shell to get a small... Okay, let's, uh, let's open the shells up. What do we get out of this? We got some shells. Uh, can be found in some animal horns place. Okay, cool. All right, so we use... I know we use the shells for some of the other stuff that's in here. So let's just hit consume on all of this. And we actually did get some pearls out of that too, which is kind of cool. The clam shells you definitely use to craft the other things that are in here as well. So... We get resources out of plants in the ground. We can plant trees. We can plant all sorts of stuff. This is really cool. And as you can see, these guys are growing up pretty quick. I sped up the crop growth time though. So this should be, this should be pretty quick is what we should see. I believe, yeah, you can change the light intensity from the light tree, which is pretty cool. Um, the dragon tree, let's find out what we get out of the dragon tree. Just wood. Okay, we get wood out of the dragon tree. Uh, we have the option to switch these fern tree over to a snow as well, which I thought was kind of neat switch it to default or you can switch it back um i don't think you have the option with the dragon free uh what we got here we have this is the oh yeah yeah. this is the um what are this the sulfur fungus we can harvest this you get the sporlings the sporlings we can use to craft stuff later on and if we go back to this cooking thing this is where a lot of this stuff stands out at right so to make grilled sulfur spoiling, which essentially works like veggie cake, you would need giant bee honey and then some of this stuff off of that as well. After this stuff spoils, it'll actually turn itself into sulfur too, so you can get some advanced resources that way. Uh, going into some of the consumables here, some of these require like little animals to make. Yeah, essentially animals. That's pretty much what we're looking at here. And then let's pop this net open that we got from down there. From the net, we got a wood coral seed, looks like kelp bush seed okay and it tells you the nice thing is about this is it does tell you like where you can actually plant this at this is clearly an underwater seed um but kelp is pretty good too anyway so that's how you get most of your random resources to actually start using a lot of this stuff would be by making those sieves but then you can also go over to either one of these benches and you'll be able to search for seeds so you just throw fibers and thatch into this guy and you'll be it'll just pump out things that you can open up and potentially get some seeds from so let's go get a cut some thatch real quick come back and pop one just and pop make one and open it up just so you guys can check that out 
All right, went out and knocked a couple trees down, so we got some thatch. We can make one of these search for seed options, which again, this is fiber and thatch are going to make this. This essentially works just like the net does from those ocean sieves, but the ocean sieves don't produce it very fast. But so we have a uh, bag. Yep, it's a bag full of old seeds. We open it up, bam. And now we have a bunch of different seeds. We can plant cactus. Um, I actually got some earthworms out of that. Bamboo. We can make the kelp again. Um, so you get a lot of different options, and it looks like most of this stuff can be refrigerated. And let's go down here and take a look at it. So it looks like uh, it looks like it's about five hours with the cactus seed. If I throw it in the refrigerator, it's still only five, well, six hours, which is a little weird. So I'm wondering if the refrigerator doesn't work with these guys. So on that respect, let's check the preserving bin and see if that does. Perhaps the preserving bin works. I've seen this happen sometimes with other mods and, and even other in-game stuff for Ark where the uh, refrigerator won't extend the spool timer or something, but a preserving bin will. So let's check it out. Uh, so right, what were we looking at? The cactus, so we got six hours. Okay, gotcha. So preserving bin is what you want to use with these guys. So let's double check that. So our coral fern is at four minutes. And it's at 42 minutes here. Yep. Sporling, six and a half. It's an hour. Yep. It looks like that's how this goes. So you want to use the preserving bin with anything in this mod and not the refrigerator. Refrigerator is not going to do anything for you. Unfortunately, that's that would be how that works. All in all, this is a really ambitious mod that does a lot more than just what I'm showing you. So there's a lot of other things that you can plant and grow to not only be decorative and add some cool flair to your builds, but if you wanted to do a gigantic farm, you could do that. If you wanted to just have stuff grow for you that you could just harvest, you could do that too. You could basically make yourself pretty self-sustaining with a lot of the stuff that grows out of here. The options are pretty close to being endless. Obviously not completely endless, but pretty darn close. I'm a huge fan of this one. I think everything looks great. It looks beautiful. This is a really cool farming mod that I would absolutely advise uh, that I would I would want to use on a PvE environment for sure. The options to be able to kind of full bore go crazy with some of the cooking stuff is really cool and farming stuff with me is really great. One of the things I always really admired out of Primitive Plus when that was available and it didn't really get finished, but one of the things I really liked about Primitive Plus was the option to grow all these different things and make different stuff out of it. It kind of felt like you were a bit more immersed inside of the ARC environment as it stands. So I really enjoy this one. I would highly suggest checking this one out. That is it, guys. That is the Plant World mod. We will have a link to the workshop page in the description of the video so you guys can check that out at your leisure hope you guys enjoy it and i'll see you on the next one